back here at Xfinity Center. Maryland 77-66 over the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Both of them came in 14 and 6. Joining us in the second segment, along with Bruce Posters, Jeff Ehrman. Jeff, tell everybody before I forget to ask you where they can find you on Twitter and, and about your publication. So on Twitter, I'm at Jeff underscore Ehrman, E-R-M-A-N-N, and my site is called InsideMDSports.com. You, got, you have a lot of followers. You've been doing this for a while. How long have you been inside Maryland sports? I've been doing this for about 12 years. Before that, at newspapers, but digital online, I've covering Maryland for the past 12 years, so it's been a little while. And we've enjoyed uh, Josh. He's been on a couple of our Tuesdays at Maryland Stadium. Who dressed you? You look perfectly Maryland. My wife. Tonight. Who else? My wife. <laughs> this is her favorite jacket. Yeah. It always gets compliments. She so didn't know you were going to be on TV, though, right? No. <laughs> yeah, no, she did. And maybe it's. Well, what were your she's impressions? Trying to, maybe she's trying to keep what the other women away. What were your impressions tonight? Um, no, I think they played great. You know, now I don't want to say great. They, you know, they came out a little slow. Uh, they led for the final 29 minutes of the game, so it was really never in doubt. Minnesota's not full, at full force. You know, they're kind of stumbling toward the middle of the pack lately. But, you know, more than anything, I felt like it was a, just a chance to rebound from that Michigan you know, Michigan loss. There was, you know, this was a possible kind of free fall after a loss like that. So they, well, they I rebounded. I think it turned out to be an incentive. Because they took a team that was much better than them on the road, a team that had just beat Michigan State, and they took them. They had them beat. It's just the unfortunate end of right. the game. And I think they parlayed off of that. And slowing that ball down has meant a lot. Yeah. It's it changed the nature of the team. Well, I think you're starting to see Turgeon coach. He's been left with fewer players than he thought. He has no choice. No choice. He has to coach the guys that he has, and suddenly it looks like a better team. It right. does, and you, but you've got to be cautious when you say that just because, you know, the competition in, in the middle of the Big Ten is a little down this year. But, yeah, no, they have played better. Kevin Herter, I thought, was great tonight. He's, right. he, You can see him gradually turning into a star. I think next right. year he's, he's a full-fledged star. So, the thing we got to remember. I don't want to interrupt you. Maryland has played three of the toughest four games they're going to play all year. The three games on the road to Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan State, right. and you have Purdue left. You have Purdue, at Purdue and Michigan State here. Right. So those are your hardest games. And yeah. you have Michigan here. But my point is the ones on the road mm -hmm. are much more problematical. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. If you look at the rest of the schedule, you know, you Maryland cannot assume anything. But I'll tell you, they'll be favored against Rutgers at home. They'll be favored against... Uh, who else we got at home? They'll be favored against Michigan at home. Won't be favored against Michigan State. So, in other words, their chances, their chances of winning are at Wisconsin. They're definitely going to be favored. Right. Tuesday's yeah. a sneaky one. Tuesday's a big game at well, Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Indiana's really improved It's lately. Monday, I think. Isn't it? Or is it uh, I think it's Tuesday. Okay. Remember, Indiana's playing much better defense. Well, that's one they need to steal. That's one they need to steal. You know, it's a winnable but a tough game. Indiana's won three or four in a row they play great defense so that's that's one that you know you're really going to have to get one of those mid middle mid-level mm -hmm. uh big 10 games that so they today's need to thursday you got friday saturday sunday monday they right. should be ready and then you got another another five days off until the michigan state game and, and then you're at purdue so this is going to be a, a nice stretch here you need a what you'd say well you need to win one of the three. Oh, clearly one two yeah. would be two would be a, a major three victory three is highly unlikely but two would be two fantastic. would be a major right. victory what do you think of the development of cowan what's his ceiling oh i mean i think he's he's getting to be just just about as good as mellow trimble was yeah. you know you don't see the inconsistency that Trimble had. You don't right. see those four for 18 nights that we saw with Mel. Right. He doesn't have that same kind of high-end scoring ability quite, although he's, already, he's starting to show that even. You know, he, he I think he had uh, 17, 10, and 6 tonight. You know, so that's that's so, impressive. Uh, yeah, and the 10 assists are the most that Mello had 10 uh, three, two or three years ago. So that, that's a good number. Hell of a floor game. I, I didn't see for sure, but I think he only had three or four turnovers. Right. Yeah. right. He had three turnovers to 10 assists. That's all. Well, that's yeah. a great game. Right. Considering he played Virtually 48 minutes. I'd be 40 minutes. Yeah, I think 40 minutes. He's leading so, the uh, leading the Big Ten in minutes played. Right. Yeah. It is what it is. It yeah. is. So before we wrap this up tonight from Xfinity Center, what have you heard about any Walt Bell replacement news? That's, a good, that's everybody seems to be asking me that same question tonight. Um, Bruce, I, ask him. Uh, everybody uh, asked. Jetfish. <laughs> uh, I think that would be huge. I don't see that one happening. I, I know Durkin it. loved him the first time around and wanted to hire him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't have a name for you. I do know that. Durkin, uh, from what I'm hearing, has a guy already lined up, and it, it's not going to be long. So I don't think it's going to be a drawn-out search where you're going from one guy to the next. Right. I think it's going to wrap up soon. Uh, same style or different style? I, I would think the same style. I don't think you can win at Maryland with a smash mouth 
you know, you got to take advantage of the athletes here. You're not going to beat Michigan or Wisconsin at their own game. So I, I would guess same style. All right. Well, Jeff, I thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank tell you. everybody where they about your site. Yeah, yeah inside, inside MDSports.com. We're part of the 24-7 Sports Network. So if you'd like to follow Terps and, and Maryland Recruiting, check us out. All right. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. This has been the Viner Four Gates Post Game Show, Bruce. Also brought to you by Meyer Consulting. Meyer right. Consulting for years and years of Rockville, and we're going to leave you with the Maryland. You can say it, national championship lacrosse, lacrosse team. What a great night! I think that emphasized. I think that pushed the night forward when you had champions on the floor, and they are champions. And they open against Navy when? November the 10th, naturally. Uh, February the 10th. February 10th, naturally at the same time as the Maryland Northwestern game, which only Maryland seems to find to do. Okay. Right. Well, we're going to leave here happy. 77, 66, Definitely. Terps over Minnesota. We will see you on the radio on Saturday morning on 1300 CBS Sports Radio, and we'll be back here at Xfinity Center for the Michigan State game. John Tillman. We'll be on my radio show on Saturday morning, the Sports Maven, and uh, we'll have a lot of Stefan Diggs comments as well. All right. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Jeff, thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys. All Thank right. you Good evening from Xfinity Center. <laughs>